Hi everyone, this is Tulio Servuso with Dojo Live. I am still here at GBTA 2019 in Chicago. This is the last interview of the series of the show. And I have with me Duke Chong, who is the CEO of Travel Bank. I'm really excited to talk with him. Duke, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me here. My pleasure. Uh, please tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce yourself, tell us about your background and how you sure. got here. Sure, happy to. Um, I'm, uh, I founded Travel Bank. Um, I have uh, my whole career in startups. In fact, I started my first company in my dorm room uh, back in 2001, right after the dot com. And of course, we didn't know it was dot com at the time. We just uh, wanted to build something amazing. At the time, uh, my company was called Paratur, which was a paradigm of the future. And uh, really looking to transform the customer service business. And so I worked on that uh, for 12 years, in fact. And in 2013, um, Microsoft approached us and we decided to uh, sell to Microsoft. So we became part of Microsoft. Uh, now um, CRM and then of course now part of their cloud uh, business. Uh, so we're very proud. In fact, um, what I'm most proud about Microsoft is, is their journey over the last few, five years, they have transform themselves uh, to become a cloud-first technology company, which was part of the roadmap in uh, my first company to help them achieve that. And uh, now Microsoft has done so many amazing things, become the largest company in the world uh, after all these years. Once again. Once again. <laughs> How you know, incredible was that? And uh, we felt grateful to be uh, part of that, uh, helping them transition to that success. And of course, a lot of my whole team is still there and uh, enjoying every moment of their uh, success. When I got to Microsoft, um, of course, we were moving to the Microsoft platforms. And uh, when it came to expenses and travel, uh, Microsoft was using Concur at the time. And I had never used Concur before. Uh, but we heard a lot of feedback about Concur from our employees post acquisition. And it was the first time I had had uh, got a chance to learn about this industry because none of us come from the expense and travel space. And uh, I was planning to go take off to do something else, to enjoy myself, but instead, this opportunity evolved in front of me. And, um, and it's so interesting how the, you know, the world takes you down different paths. And I ended up in this situation learning about expensive travel. I didn't think too much of it at the time, other than while I was there, uh, suddenly the announcement of SAP acquiring her happened. And then I realized, wow, that is such a huge event. Maybe there is an opportunity to build the next generation of products for this industry. And it gave me the inspiration to leave and uh, move to San Francisco to build Travel Bank, which is um, creating this next generation of expensive travel. And our mission is to serve every user in the world, make it ubiquitous, and help transform this entire industry. We had the benefit of building it from the beginning, which was great. And of course, everybody is a user of expenses in travel. And uh, now we got to be in this position to create it because um, we're all users and now being able to create it is um, you can learn from all the years of experience as a traveler to build what we believe is the next 10 years. Uh, I'm, I'm reminded of that Beatles song that says life is what happens while you're busy making plans. Yeah, exactly. There you go. <laughs> you had a plan to yeah. relax a little bit. And, and it went a different thing. way. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'm curious to learn uh, what does Travel Bank, what is the value of What's unique about it? Why should people care? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about uh, the company. Yeah, so travel and expense, a lot of people know that because expense software and travel <laughs> managed programs have been around for many years. When I got into this business and moved to San Francisco, I asked a lot of the customers, my old customers, um, what they use for expense and travel. Many of them were very small businesses, and there are some fragmented expense products out there, um, but almost nobody had a travel program. Uh, no software, no program. In fact, everybody said to me, our employees just book uh, outside and they expense through their expense system. So I asked them, if you could have anything you want, what would you want? And they all said, if you can build a really modern experience for our users to get up and running very quickly for travel, we would use that. And as I was leaving, they would grab me and they would say, and by the way, if it also has expenses together, that's exactly what every small business needs. So I learned so much from the early customer conversations I had. And we said, wow, this is an opportunity to build a next generation product that has not only the travel product, but also the expenses. And for small businesses, this market is um, wide open. It's 100%, almost 100% green. 
90% of this industry doesn't have any incumbents. And part of that reason, is we believe, is because the incumbents have been so focused on the higher end. And as much as they wanted to come down, it's challenging because the products were never built for the small business. Small businesses, what they really want is they want five things together. They want an expense solution. They want a modern booking experience. They want a 24-7 travel support capability. They want the ability to manage some travel policies. And they want some reward incentives to encourage their employees to make better decisions. And they want to go to one place to get all of this. Because small businesses don't have the understanding or capacity like the large companies with travel managers where they can go out and do an RFP and they know what they're looking for, they know how to source it. Small businesses many times were just selling to the finance teams and there's no travel manager. The company is so small there's no FTE for a travel manager. So we are uh, the first solution in and they ask us what they need <laughs> and we basically present them with these capabilities and even though they're not ready to do travel from the beginning, they're, they may be ready to do expenses. So they get up and running with expenses and they come back to us uh, six months or a year later and then start their travel program with us. So I'm curious, the SMB space is quite broad. Yes. Uh, people are amazed the size of companies that are considered SMBs. Can you be a little bit specific in terms of what your sweet spot is at the yeah. 100 employees, 50 employees, and then a sole group or yeah. a little bit Good more question. for those listening and sure. not be interested sure. if it's a fit for that? Sure. Small business for us uh, is very simple. We look at it uh, total travel spend. So for us, small businesses, companies that spend less than $10 million of travel or less, and oftentimes most of them are even less, yeah. less than $1 million of travel, but we'll go as high as $10 million. This segment is um, very underserved. There are no great products that uh, serve this market in a way that allows these companies to enjoy the software by themselves to get up and running so easily. And so we enter this market with a focus to serve this market and bring them these experiences around travel and expenses together, make it easy for them. And I'll give you an example of that. One of our mission is to design for the traveler, the end user. Whereas a lot of our competitors are going for the administrators. But we think the traveler, this is the time when the traveler needs more benefits. And the way we get to the travelers is they can download us from the App Store or from the Play Store. And what we say is uh, once you download our app, if you can't do an expense report or book a flight in less than two minutes, then we fail. That's how easy it is to get up and running. Because the small businesses don't want to read a six month implementation process. And to go through the training and all that. Right? They, they, they don't have time for that. They need to get going quickly because small businesses, uh, every month counts. So, so I have a question, burning question. Are the expenses only for travel or are all expenses to be done? All expenses, all expenses. Okay, that's pretty cool. It's cool, right, it's cool. So <laughs> most companies actually start with expense because it, most small businesses, they don't have that much travel. Right. But they have expense, right? Because they have uh, maybe a few employees. It could be only five employees, it's fine. But those employees need a way to expense, and they need to be able to get the reimbursements. So how do they do that? Um, well, their employees will go to the App Store and download us, even before their company has decided to use Ravel. Their employees go to the App Store and find our app, and they download it. They may have a series of receipts on the table, and then they just take pictures of it, and we help them create an expense report in two minutes. And, and then they can just submit it. Submit it to their, their founder or their CFO, and the founder there uh, gets the travel bank expense report for the first time, powered by travel. And that's the first time the decision maker ever sees us. It was not, not from us, actually. It was actually from their employees. And so what happens, as you can imagine, is the first co-worker sends it, second co-worker sends it, third co-worker sends it. By the fourth or fifth one, the founder or the CFO will say, hey, I guess you guys all like travel. Why don't we just set it up? Once the company sets it up, then they can approve and reimburse on my paid for app. But we were able to now work with the entire company. So that's our distribution. So in the two and a half years we've been live, the company has grown to 100,000 users, 15,000 companies. And all through this approach, most of them we never talk to. We don't have a chance to talk to them yet until they grow to a certain size. And then we'll come in and help them to be their first travel program. And our vision is to grow with them over time. So we have companies that started very early that um, maybe 20 users to two and a half years ago. Now they're 500 people. We have larger companies like DoorDash. DoorDash may have started uh, less than 1,000 employees and now going to 3,000. So it, 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 it can happen very fast. And our, 
our mission is to actually to come in first. We want to be your first solution for expensive travel, and we want to help serve these customers over time. You know what I really love about it? I love the idea that it's also portable. I can take it with me. That's right. One thing I could never stand is like you had an expense system in the company, and you had all these things, and and, and then leave the company, and you can't take that with you. You got to start all over. I also like the idea. It's kind of like a grassroots campaign. You go into the consumer who then influences the decision that's right, that's at the right. top. That's the, uh, you know, having been in enterprise software for many years, my first company was sold top down. And because back, you know, 15 years ago, someone up top makes a decision and then they force everyone to use it. Right. But the employees never had a voice. They say they do, but they never really had a voice. In today's world, what's changed in the beginning out of the Silicon Valley is this uh, bottom-up, we call it bottom-up uh, democratization of time, where the employees have a voice because they have the same access to these products as the decision makers. So why not let your employees, who are the ones you're actually helping to make them more productive, why not get them involved in the process? And even better, why don't they be part of the decision-making process? Let the decision makers know what they choose to use. So we learned this with companies like Slack. Slack, you know, all over the company, people want to choose Slack, and they run it for their own department. Before you know it, the Slack is all over the place. Dropbox, you know, users use it personally. They come into the office, and I know how to use Dropbox. Why don't we standardize for Dropbox? Because I already know how to use it personally. And of course, I can use it for the company because it's the same user experience. We think the same with expensive travel. If you can start with using an expense system as an employee, many users start to use it, and then eventually, the decision maker will say, well, I guess you guys all have decided. Let's make it easy for everybody to standardize. So that's our mission uh, this time around, is to really win the hearts and minds of the employees and let them be a part of the decision making process. That's changed so much in 15 years that we've been seeing this, and it will continue to change, but certainly we see the shift from one decision maker now to let the employees decide. And um, it's very transformative in how you distribute this all. I love it. So, speaking of employees, let's shift gear a little bit. You've had some growth, you've had some exponential growth in the past few years. Tell us a little bit about what that journey's been like for you, maybe a little bit about your culture, how you attract great talent, uh, and where you're going, what's your trajectory moving forward. Yeah, great question. So, this every experience is new. My first company, um, I built it in the East Coast, and the East Coast building a company has a unique experience. And part of it, a founder, especially in technology, is you read about Silicon Valley, you want to be a part of that to see what it's like. So I decided, Travel Bank, we should try to build it in the Bay Area to see if it's really different. And I have learned so much in the two and a half years uh, building the company there. Uh, number one, product expectations are very high in the Bay Area because there's so many technology companies. Competing for talent is extraordinarily difficult because even though we're here at GBTA and we may have competitors in this space and travel, the reality is that when you're in the Bay Area, you're competing with every technology company for talent, right? Because the engineer is an engineer. And so it really helped us uh, need to rethink about what's important for us and the type of people we really want. And so what we discovered for startups, uh, what's really worked in my experience is we really want people who are very able to be self-sufficient, to able to be almost gritty, if you will, to be able to do the things that um, others um, may not ask them to do. And they have an ability to just do it themselves. Um, we, are, we have a simple uh, mantra that is, um, do the things that other people aren't doing. If you see it, you should just do it. No, because no one even has time to go tell you to do it. By the time someone goes tells you to do it, it's already too slow. So we want people like that. And there are many people that have that kind of ambition and talent and mindset, which is really important. That for us is very important in our phase of the business right now. Um, and very difficult to find these kind of self-starters. So that's a high priority in the type of people we want to build this business. I think we also have uh, built a culture around um, building something um, that will last for a long time. So something that's enduring over a period of time. And we like to look at this business as a longer term. I think in startups, many times people think of it as a very short term, one or two years. And certainly you read about that. One or two years, maybe something happens, right? And then great, and everyone moves on. When I sold my first company, the moment actually that was happy and sad was when you sell your company. 
it is a happy moment, of course, because it's almost another phase of the business. But it is also a very sad moment because you didn't realize to get from point A to point B, all of the struggles you went through, <laughs> the challenges, when you're in it every day, it feels like it's a lot of weight. But when you get to the end, when it's all over, then suddenly you feel like, wow, those rewards and those solutions of the problems you solved, those sort of small <laughs> wins along the way, when you plot it on a graph, it's this huge chart. And that's the journey, actually. The journey was all about solving these problems along the way. And the challenges change, of course, right? But the mindset was all about what's the next challenge and how do we solve it? And I think people who think that way will get through a lot of these challenges, grow something amazing. But you don't realize it when you're in it. You only realize it when it's over. Because when it's over, it really is over. And what happens is it becomes very quiet. Everybody's move on to do other things. And then it's, um, then you start to say, wow, I kind of missed the beginning. <laughs> How funny that is. You know, I know a lot of founders, their dream is to go public or um, and eventually solve a company. And then they don't realize that what they had going right. was the fun part. It was actually, this is the fun part, is working with so many amazing people, build something. And um, face these challenges is perfectly fine. It actually makes it more fun. It's, it reminds me of this book, uh, Built to Last. Exactly. It's uh, exactly. when you made, made, made the comment about Building to Last. That's exactly the and great it's analogy. An interesting, if there's a different, um, um, it's an interesting dynamic between the East Coast and the Bay Area. That's right. You know, the Bay Area back in the day was the gold rush, right? That's right. So everyone, it, it always has had this energy of go make a quick buck. That's right. right. Um, and, and it sometimes we lose out because the, the happiness and the joy is in the journey. It's in the journey, <laughs> right? yeah, it's in the journey. I also have to say that in the West Coast, one thing I learned coming from the East Coast, so very different culture, and you're from the East Coast, too, the East Coast right? too. So you can relate to what I'm gonna say. East Coast tends to be, in my opinion, a little bit more conservative. And I think for startups, being too conservative isn't that good. Because what it creates an environment where you're not willing to take that much risk. In a startup, you have to take an appropriate level of risk. And if you're not able to be different, then you're not going to be able to be better than your competitors. So what the West Coast taught us, if anything, was actually learning how to be different in an environment that is safe for you to do that. Because if you want to be different sometimes in an environment that's not that safe, then naturally you're going to adapt and become more conservative. So what the West Coast taught us was it's okay to come up with a new way to solve a problem. And maybe it's not correct, but that's okay because nobody's going to come and yell at you and say, shame on you, don't do that again. In fact, they, so will, so they will continue to encourage you to try it again. And try it again, it's okay, because eventually, as long as you keep trying, you may find a better solution. So that, you have to have a safe environment, a welcoming environment that's open, that allows you to survive there. And I think the West Coast taught us that. And because of that, um, you're able to move a lot faster. You don't have to um, make decisions so slowly. And so I think part of the success of these tech companies, and maybe other industries too, but I'm not in them, so I can speak to them. But the tech companies, the environment you're in is so important because it changes your mindset and how you build this. And I can tell you, Travel Bank has scaled much faster than my first company. It took 12 years. And then if you look at the same progress in our two and a half years, the amount of progress is three or four times faster already than what we did in the first time. The only thing really I can point to is the experience of, uh, of building both companies. What was different about it? Wow. I, I think that's fantastic. You know, one, as I mentioned before we started, you know, Dojo Live itself is going through a transformation. We, right. we are very interested in, as we move forward, in, really helping to bridge the cultural divide. And sometimes the cultural divide is also just different ways of doing things, like the East Coast approach to be more conservative than the West Coast, which welcomes risk-taking, company risk-taking. Love to hear more about what was that like for you personally, going through that transformation and that journey of shifting from the expectation of you know perfection more towards Excellent, you know, because that's kind of the shift that that's happens, right. right? That's right. That's uh, right. What was that like for you in terms of making that shift? Did you have challenges with that? What did you learn about yourself from yeah. that? <laughs> well, 
don't forget in between I was at Microsoft too. So I have been in the early stage uh, company with some scale, then I've been in the largest company in the world, right? And then now back to the smallest again. So I have seen it in different phases. Some people would consider you, people be, to be very crazy to have, well, go through all those experiences, right? Because it's uh, so many different types of experiences on the way. I think my um, approach to it is um, being uh, open-minded about these new experiences is most important because some people, they like to tend to stick to the, something they know. And um, inherently myself, maybe that's the base of the baseline of being an entrepreneur or founder. It is something to be more about the unpredictability of where you are. And you have to be comfortable in those situations as a founder, right, of a company. Because as a founding of a company, nothing is predictable. <laughs> in fact, everything is unpredictable. So you're constantly having to be, you have to be very, uh, able to manage that well. So for us, um, I don't view this very differently, the three different phases. I just view them as different experiences. Um, maybe the benefit of doing this a second time is, um, having done it once before, we were able to make less mistakes on the things that I can see already. Um, but now being on the West Coast, you know, it is a very different experience and I welcome that. I like the new, I try to find the best of the new environments, like moving to the West Coast and understand, even for myself, learning about why it's so different to build a company in the West Coast. So when I went into it, I have a very open mind about wanting to absorb and learn as much as possible. I find that to be very rewarding. And I think with that mindset, um, nothing is perceived to be strange or you know, difficult. It's just a different experience. There are pros and there are cons, right? It's not always just you know different and better. It could be different and worse, too. You know, for example, I, we talked about talent. Acquisition of talent in the Bay Area is very difficult. So we actually have to have engineers. Um, we have engineers in eight countries in the world. Part of the draw why they want to work with us is we are a Bay Area company. So I think that helps. But the reality is we have engineers around the world because talent is everywhere. It's not just in the Bay Area, you know, even though the perception of it is there. But being in the Bay Area, we have maybe more visibility. Or maybe you have more credibility to attract some of this talent. So there are pros and there are cons um, to the experience. And I think for us, it's uh, it's about the mindset to be open to uh, uh, taking the best of each situation. And if you can uh, take in the best of that, maybe you can use that as your advantage to build something and take the business to the next level. And then when we get to the next level, we'll figure out what to do next, <laughs> yeah. you know, sort of in phases, right? Sounds great. It reminds me, I had a mentor when I started the telecom 30 years ago, his name was John Vitale, and he says, Tulio, nothing exciting happens in life until you go beyond your level of comfort. And uh, it, it's work that I've stuck by me for yeah. most of my life. Uh, when I start to get comfortable, it's like, I'm not growing or learning. I'm That's right. Comfortable. That's right. Uh, not a lot of people are willing to embrace that, but it's refreshing to hear. Earlier, I I'd interviewed another CEO who said, learn to fall in love with the problem. Yes, right. exactly. You know, have a little fear with the problem, it. and I think that's fantastic. We're wrapping up, we're coming up on time. Okay. I'd love to hear some words of wisdom uh, that you would give yourself to your, 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 the version of yourself five, ten years ago. Things you've learned that you want to tell yourself back in the day. Yeah. So that there's some young entrepreneur who's trying to figure yeah. out whether I should do this or not. Maybe those are words of wisdom that will resonate with him or her as well. Sure, sure. I would say, uh, first and foremost, as a founder or entrepreneur, you can't give up. Don't give up. That's number one. It's a, it's a, it's, it can be a very long journey, and I think that should be the expectation that uh, starting these companies is not a one or two year uh, goal. It should be something that you think about for long term. So think about the long term and build something amazing. Because I think the best companies take a long time to build. It's like I use an analogy like a crock pot. They have the best food because you just have to let it cook for a long time. Those sometimes the best food comes out of an experience like that versus a microwave. Right. So, right, so you, it, things take, great things just take a long time to build. Um, never give up. And I would say always think about how to win. That's very important. And with that mindset, it helps you find the right talent. It helps you focus on the most important things, not to be distracted. And um, it gives you the energy to continue every day to build something amazing. And, and remember at the end, it's all over when it's over and all of the great memories that you have is really the only thing you have at the end believe it or not after you sell your company only thing you can 
look back at is the memories. So your journey is really about creating memories. So because of that, make sure it's a very happy and rewarding journey. Because those are the memories you're going to remember. And those are the memories you're going to go tell the next person that talks to Tulio on the, on the webcast. Those are the stories that you will remember and be most proud about. More than anything else. More than the success, more than the money you'll make. I think at the end it's really about the journey and the memories. That's uh, what uh, drives uh, this board. And knowing that you built something that changed someone's lives. The more the better, in my opinion. That's how influential products and technology can be. That's also very uh, much priceless. I think once you build something that people use, and many millions of people around the world use it, and then you have done something to contribute to this world in a way that most people would envy. And that, I think, is um, truly a gratifying experience. And that's why we do what we do. Yeah. And whether it's this industry or another industry, I don't think that mindset changes. It's the same mindset, just apply to another innovation. It's like raising children. It's chaotic. It's crazy. Exactly. You don't know if you're gonna make it you through that know. day. But you can remember <laughs> so in the memories when they grow up and yeah. leave. You're yeah. like, what happened? I yeah, miss, miss all it. that. Exactly. So, so enjoy every moment. Exactly. That's what they say, like raising kids, exactly. right? They grow so fast. Enjoy every moment. It's true. Well, thanks for being with us. Thanks for talking with me today. I really appreciate it. I wish you a lot of success. Thank you. And, and thank you for joining us. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Cheers. Okay.